And so ultimately, I just think that we need to be wary of these factors as we continue to engage with media going forward. Again, just because something is funny and is completely valid within the context of the joke doesn't mean that it is actually true. All right, so I was mindlessly scrolling through some YouTube shorts the other day when I came across this clip from a stand-up comedian named Jenny Zagrino. The video is titled Fat and Beautiful, and in it, she jokes about how people respond when she tells them that she's fat. I'm fat, it's fine, no, no, wait, I'm fat, I'm cool with it, okay? I get, you guys, you all, it happens every time, everyone clams up, they wanna be like, no, stop it, you're beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I didn't say it was ugly, okay? They're not the same, all right? If a short person was like, I'm short, you would be like, no, stop it, you're smart. Like, they're not the same. Now, in my opinion, this is a pretty decent joke. She draws an analogy between two similar scenarios and uses the absurdity of the behavior in one scenario to highlight the unapparent absurdity of the behavior in the other. This is a tried and true framework for a joke, and again, in my opinion, she executed it quite well. But of course, this analogy was built on a false premise, because what she's suggesting here is that just as there is no correlation between height and the perception of intelligence, there is also no correlation between weight and the perception of beauty. But in reality, there is an objective, well-documented, thoroughly investigated history that proves a direct relationship between a person's size and their perceived level of attractiveness. Now, the purpose of this video isn't to break down this complicated relationship between body size and beauty standards. It's just to highlight the fact that this relationship does indeed exist, and it has always existed. Of course, the nature of that relationship has changed throughout history, and given the current discourse around fat phobia and body positivity, I do hope to eventually make a video exploring that relationship in the future. But for now, again, the purpose of this video is just to acknowledge this relationship and to confirm that yes, contrary to the observation presented in Zagrino's joke, weight and beauty are in fact inextricably linked. Now, obviously I don't have a problem with jokes being inaccurate. At the end of the day, the purpose of a joke is to make people laugh. And more often than not, comedians will utilize hyperbole and blatantly inaccurate information in order to achieve that goal. So just to be clear, despite the fact that Zagrino's analogy was built upon a false premise, I don't actually take any issue with her joke at all. It did exactly what it was intended to do. It made people laugh. So why then am I making this video? Well, after I watched this clip, I made the mistake of scrolling through the comments. And that's when I realized that the overwhelming majority of people were accepting Zagrino's false premise as truth. And this is where I started to worry. Because even if you've never read an article or a study about this topic, the link between weight and the perception of beauty was something that I had previously believed to be intrinsically understood. After I'd watched the clip, I thought to myself, that's a good joke. Sure, it's inaccurate, but Overall, it was well executed and I hope she goes far. And when I decided to go through the comments, I expected to find a similar sentiment being echoed. But of course, that is not what I found. And in my opinion, this comment section is a microcosm of what I believe to be a major problem with how we all, myself included, engage with media these days. Because I think two things are happening here. First, I think comedic content lowers our defenses and makes it easier for us to accept inaccurate information. And second, I believe we have started to conflate validity with truth. Because by the strictest definition, Zagrino's observation is 100% valid. In the realm of logical or deductive reasoning, it is not required for a valid argument to have premises that are actually true, but to have premises that, if they were true, would guarantee the truth of the argument's conclusion. And so to understand what this means, let's look at two examples. The first example states that one, Ralph is a dog, two, no dogs are allowed on the roller coaster, and three, therefore, Ralph is not allowed on the roller coaster. This example is easy enough to understand and accept, right? Okay, well, now let's look at the second example, which asserts that one, every dog is a reptile, two, every reptile is cold-blooded, and three, therefore, every dog is cold-blooded. And even though this argument is completely counterfactual, it is still 100% valid. So coming back to Zagrino's joke, as I originally tried to outline, her analogy was built on a false premise, which again is the claim that weight is to the perception of beauty as height is to the perception of intelligence. But as the second example demonstrates, if this premise 
was true, then the truth of her argument's conclusion, that weight and the perception of beauty are therefore completely unrelated, would be guaranteed. Which means that this is a completely valid observation. And when we take into consideration that this valid observation was disseminated comedically, I think it starts to make sense why it was so readily accepted. Because it is well documented that humor is an extremely effective method of persuading people to your argument. And so this combination of valid but untrue observations delivered via joke or punchline has, in my opinion, contributed to the creation of an environment where we so readily accept and perpetuate logical fallacies like the one in Zagrino's joke. And this is a side note, but I believe that if we apply this understanding in a broader sense, we can easily see why a website like Twitter is at the center of our discourse when it comes to understanding cultural issues. Despite the fact that it is largely considered by the majority of people to be the worst forum for holding these discussions, Twitter's character limit promotes this punchline format of communication, which facilitates the proliferation of an endless supply of these valid but untrue arguments and conclusions. I recently made a video about the concept of the white savior in media, in which I watched and analyzed several movies that were accused of being white savior narratives to see if any of these allegations held any weight. And I found that in all of these movies, even the ones that were in fact problematic, almost all of the specific critiques made against them were objectively false. And I can't help but feel that similar surface level valid but untrue observations delivered comedically directly led to some, if not all, of these false accusations. So for example, a lot of people consider Chappelle's show to be one of the most iconic TV shows in history. And personally, to this day, I can still recall some of the standout sketches and characters because, again, humor is an extremely effective method of communication. But one skit in particular kept coming to mind as I was researching the topic of white saviorism. In one episode, there was an interview with a comedian named Paul Mooney. And in the interview, he calls out Hollywood for repeatedly hiring white leads in stories about minorities. Sound familiar? I mean, Hollywood is crazy. First they had the Mexican with Brad Pitt, and now they've got the last samurai with Tom Cruise. Well, I've written the film. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll produce my film. The last on earth oh. starring Tom Hanks. How about that? Now again, I actually think that this is a great joke. And I specifically remember assimilating Mooney's observation here into my own worldview about how Hollywood is crazy and these movies are offensive. Because again, I am also guilty of conflating validity with truth, especially when that valid but untrue observation is delivered comedically. Unfortunately though, I'm gonna have to absolutely ruin his joke by overanalyzing it. Because unlike Zagrino's joke, Mooney's claim isn't actually built on a false premise. So the premise of Mooney's joke is simply the claim that very obviously white movie stars are starring in these narratives about non-white people. And that is an undeniably true observation. Mooney then exaggerates the juxtaposition of story about non-white people with a very obviously white actor, which is where the humor is derived. But unfortunately, he uses that juxtaposition alone as a basis to claim that this phenomenon in Hollywood is offensive. So overall, the premise of the joke is logically sound. Famous white people are in fact featuring heavily in stories about non white people. But the allegation of offense that was made using that premise is subject to scrutiny. And I just spent 26 minutes scrutinizing those allegations in my last video, so I won't repeat my conclusions here. Nevertheless, this joke from Paul Mooney kept popping up in my head as I was trying to understand the claims around white saviorism in media. And this video from Zagrino finally helped me to understand why. Because this is the same surface level valid but untrue observation delivered comedically that I believe has tainted the entire discussion around white saviorism as well as so many other discussions around cultural hot button issues, like our conceptualization of beauty as it relates to a person's size and weight. Again, I won't rehash my conclusions here, but in my research, I discovered that the main issue that most of those articles and videos took with the white savior complex was essentially the same juxtaposition that Mooney presented in his joke. White person involved in a movie about non-white people. Mooney's joke is the perfect example of what is wrong with the entire debate around this issue. And I think that's why it kept popping into my head as I was making that video. And so Mooney's joke, like Segrino's joke, is another example of a valid but untrue observation delivered comedically that we, myself included, so easily accepted and perpetuated. And so ultimately, I just think that we need to be wary of these factors as we continue to engage with media going forward. Again, just because something is funny and is completely valid within the context of the joke doesn't mean that it is actually true. And looking back on my channel, I realized that essentially what I'm doing is trying to take a deeper look at a 
lot of these apparently valid claims to see if they hold up. And yes, as I always try to acknowledge, there is validity within these claims. But as I've tried to explain here, validity is not synonymous with truth. And I believe that this claim that there is no correlation between weight and the perception of beauty is another example of a valid observation that is completely untrue. But in any case, I think that's going to be it for this one. If you made it this far, thank you so much for indulging me. Obviously, this is a much shorter video compared to my last few magnum opuses. Those videos took me weeks to research, write, and edit. And while I still plan on making that type of long form content, the reality is that I just can't afford to spend that much time on a single video at this point. Ultimately, I am trying to grow this channel. And so in order to do that, I feel like I should try to post more consistently. But even then, this script took me way longer than I originally anticipated. So this plan could completely fall apart in the next few weeks. Nevertheless, if you do enjoy those longer videos, don't worry. I definitely still plan on making them. But yeah, just wanted to give an update on the process because I think it's been a month since my last post. In any case, thank you so much for your patience. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope this made sense. But of course, if it didn't, please feel free to let me know why so that I can try to address any misconceptions in the comments. But with that said, I wish you all the very best going forward. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Peace.